Yes. Thank you so much for being with us Thank this you. morning. And obviously, uh, Tampa had to be considering this, but, but how prepared were they for this announcement that he was hanging it up? You know, Coach Bruce Arians was asked last week if he had any idea what Tom's plans were, if he was planning to come back or not. And he seemed to think it was about a 50-50 chance. But even a few days ago when I had reached out to him, at that point in time, Tom had not told them that he was ready to hang it up. He told them he was undecided. So they were preparing for the move. And even when we talked to Arians in a season-ending press conference, he said that they would go over contingency plans. But I don't think he was fully prepared for this idea that he would, in fact, hang it up. I, I think he thought it was about a 50-50 chance, but I, I don't think that he or the organization were fully prepared, fully expected it. Jenna, thank you so much for being on the show. Covering this Bucks team, was there a point in this season where you as a reporter and other reporters felt like, wait a minute, this could be it? You saw signs that this could be it for Tom Brady. And if so, when did that moment occur? You know, that's interesting because he was under contract for another year. But he – and you know Tom. He's always a man of his word and, and he wants to – fulfill contracts you know that's really important to him but they added on that year for salary cap purposes last season so they could essentially keep the band back together but you know I think now looking back on it maybe there were signs like Tom said he didn't want a farewell tour but I go back to week four when he went back to Foxborough and I'm seeing all these signs physical signs from people where whether it's his face superimposed on the sacred heart of Jesus, that, that piece of artwork, I saw that in the stands. Uh, I, I saw people just, um, you know, all kinds of signs throughout the stadium, again, physical signs. And it, it really did kind of seem like that perfect full circle moment. But at the time for me, it just didn't register. It really wasn't until maybe the last two weeks of the regular season, the more that those questions started to come up and the more you heard of some of those rumblings from reports. And Tom did his best to kind of deflect that. But I, I think now looking back on it, 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 it did seem like he was getting to a place where, where he would, would be satisfied with walking away. But, but I'm not going to lie, it really wasn't until – like even in that final that final press conference we had with him after the after the Rams lost, I still mm -hmm. thought that there was a, a chance that he would come back. Maybe even the fifty fifty, like Bruce Arian said. Um, but when he did that interview, when he did that that his podcast with Jim Gray and started talking in detail about his family and and finally being able to have waffles with his children on Monday morning because he wasn't going into the facility. That's when mm -hmm. it really kind of hit me, man. And, and that's the thing that I would stress to everyone because it was a little surprising to me that he said he would be proud and satisfied walking away on a loss because he's this ultimate competitor and we know him for throwing iPads or I shouldn't say iPads, sorry, surface tablets on the sidelines um, at games. And, and just the guy is the ultimate competitor. He loves to win. And, and that's why he's done it at the highest level for so long and has said seven okay. Super Bowl rings. But the fact that he'd be proud and satisfied walking away on a loss um, that told me kind of everything I needed well, to know, that this is so much bigger. This is about family, spending time with them, being being the, the type of father and, and husband that he feels he needs to be. Jenna, I'm asking a question, and I asked that question because there were a couple of times we, we know the Antonio Brown fiasco. We also saw Tom Brady allude uh, to a lack of focus on a part of some teammates this season he seemed to be dissatisfied at certain moments it wasn't something that he wore on his sleeve week to week or anything like that but throughout this season there were there, there were those times where his frustration seemed to be evident and it seemed to be publicized and that's why I was asking that question as it pertained to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers it didn't seem that this year was as fun and as thrilling as it was the first year in Tampa for him any accuracy to I that at all. I, I didn't get that sense, to be honest, when I was watching. I, I didn't really get the sense. Um, I think it was frustrating for them because of all the injuries that just continued to pile up. I mean, their defense okay. did not have an entire like a game together at full strength until that, that loss to the Rams. That was the first time all season they had a completely healthy defense. And by then, 
by, by, by the time the game ended, he was having to rely on tight end Cam Brate in the slot because they just had no more healthy receivers. I think that was really the frustrating thing for them was the fact that those guys just kept dropping like flies and, and there really wasn't anything that they could do about it. Yeah. Jenna, we'll let you go get to practice. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank we you. really appreciate it. And I'll just end it by what she said, Stephen A., that it felt full circle there in Tampa. And that's how I felt also with this year, that it felt like a full circle moment, even though he didn't win the Super Bowl. I but just so. finishing on with an MVP performance. Well, I've been on a record. I thought that last next year would be his last, but only because he kept emphasizing the year 45 years of age. Mm -hmm. And I know he turns 45 in August. So knowing him, like she said, in terms of him being committed to his contract, keeping his word, even though she thoroughly explained how it was just for cap purposes that that extra year was added money-wise because you wanted to make things work yeah. uh, cap-wise. But the bottom line is he kept saying 45. Yeah. And so my thinking was with TB12 and him announcing that he was going to mm -hmm. play until he was 45, thinking that he could do it at an elite level, coming off the condo season that he had, and then being saddled with injuries, I said, hey, okay, you make one last run at age 45, Make sure everybody comes back healthy. You keep the pieces that you want. Yeah. You get rid of those that you don't, and you go with it from there. But obviously, he had a different plan, and I think Giselle had everything to do with that. And she should. Absolutely. And she should. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.